Good morning, it's a beautiful morning and we have had rain, everything's wet, but the sky is blue and today I'm gonna to do a Q&A on one question. It's a question I get by, from quite a few of you. If I'm growing in an 18 gallon tote, how much stuff can I grow in one tote? That's a really good question and the reason is you need to know how many things to put in. You put in too many plants and they all fight for the nutrients. It will depend on what you're doing. If you're gonna buy your own potting soil or make your own soil like I do, then you could probably get away with a lot. I would say on when you make your own soil, you can probably push it because you've got microbes and earthworms in there. But when you buy just a bag of potting soil, it's pretty much already broke down. So I wouldn't over push it. So let's just talk in general, what do you grow in a tote? Now, as far as a tote, whether it's on the ground, whether it is up in the air, on a chair, on a table, on bricks, whatever, this goes for buckets too, but let's talk about totes mainly. You can grow anything, pretty much anything you grow in the ground, you can grow in a tote. You can grow tomatoes, cucumbers, all different types of squash, lettuce, herbs, anything you grow in the ground. Maybe not a full-size tree, though I have done the papayas and you know how that is. So know that that you can grow especially plants that grow for one season but then again tomatoes can go for the following year and they can go for years in the tote all right now the example i'm going to show you today and this is why i want to do it is these two totes both of these containers are set up exactly the same way they have everything you've seen go back and look at the videos how i fill a tote with all the twigs and branches and everything that I collect from around the yard. Whatever I find goes in there, including any kitchen scraps, which is basically garden matter, going in there into these totes. And then on the top, I either use some native soil or I use some really rich broken down soil out of one of my other totes. And I use that on the top because you wanna plant the plants in some sort of soil that's already broke down. Even if it's only three inches, two inches, the main thing you wanna start them so they can set their roots in some sort of broken down soil. Broken down, okay? Now, both of these plants are exactly the same. I will be honest with you, I have no idea what they are. They're some sort of squash. They grew in my yard. They're probably a hybrid zucchini. And I kind of spread them around when they started popping up in the beginning before my seedlings started coming up. Now look at the leaf on this. I want you to really see this because this is really going to tell the story. See how big this is? Now let's walk over here. They were growing all at the same time. Look at this. Okay. And I've got layering in here. So I've got a pot in here growing walking onions. Look, they're having babies. And I've got another pot in here. Don't worry. It's the same thing, but it's garlic chives. Doesn't make a difference, this is garlic chives. It's layering, you know how I love to layer because if the tote dried out, they could always send their roots underneath a pot because it stays damp, but that's immaterial. See the difference in the leaves? You've already guessed it. I know some of you are screaming going, I know, I know. This one has two plants. That's all that's in there. Look at that, it's already got fruit starting. Two plants. It did have more and I pulled them out. If I would have left one plant, the leaves might have even been bigger, but there's two plants in there. I figured I can do two, I've done it before. This one, I didn't pull anything out. Let's see how many are in here. Oh my, so we've got one there, does have fruit, one there, that's two, one here, three, one here, four, one here, five, one here, six. This tote's got six plants going. Now all of them are fighting for the nutrients that are in there with the matter I put in there breaking down. But the thing is there's gonna be less because they're all fighting over it and they're all gonna absorb it. And there's gonna be more for a longer length of time in that one. So using an example of squash, I would say one or two maximum, and then you should be able to grow all into the fall and possibly into the winter, depending on where you are. This one will get depleted. Yes, I could do a two system. You know how that is, where there's two pots and I'm composting in place. But here's the thing. With six squash plants, let's call these zucchini, because they're a zucchini hybrid. Six squash plants. 
they still have a root system and they're going to be fighting in there for the amount of space that's in there. So think of that. I mean, if you've got one like this, well, now you got six like this, all packed in there. Even in the ground, you would have a problem. Too many in the ground, they eventually, some of them will die off and that's probably what will happen there because it's too much for one spot. There you got two clumps of roots growing all over. Ideally, I'm gonna say one zucchini per 18 gallon tote. And you can layer and put pots in the back with onions. You know, I use walking onions or garlic chives. Mint's okay, but mint will try to escape and get into your tote, but that's up to you if you really watched it and did not let the roots set in to your tote. But anything, you can even do a small patio tomato in there as long as you did it in the tote with the layering system with a pot in the back. You could probably do cucumbers back there. You could do any little plant, something small. Lettuce you can grow behind there. Swiss chard you can grow. Though Swiss chard gets big, it's okay. Celery you can do also if you kept check on it because that does become quite massive. So as far as your heavy feeders, which are your tomatoes, which are your squash, can be your cucumbers. A lot of these plants are heavy feeders. You really want to keep them down for an 18 gallon tote, one or two, and then you can put flowers in there. You can put anything else you want in there with them. You can actually grow walking onions straight in there and smaller plants in there with them, but you don't want to overcrowd them because if you overcrowd them and you have four, six plants like this in here, they will fruit, but they may end up getting little fruit because as they start to grow and the fruit pools because the plant needs all the nutrients, at that point, they may not mature the fruit. If you had a pumpkin in here, you'd really want to do one pumpkin. If you had a watermelon plant in here, be it a large watermelon or a small watermelon, the small types, you would want one, okay? Then you would have better production. So I think I've answered that question and it will go the same thing if you're doing a cardboard box. I'm gonna put one squash in each cardboard box. And this way, look how that one's taking off. This way, they're not fighting for, they're gonna fight with tree roots, but that's another story. They're not gonna be fighting among each other. The smart thing for me to do would be to yank one of these out. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> I could yank this one out and move it, or I could just, and leave this one, or I can leave it. For now, I think I'm gonna leave it and there's ways of feeding it and I can feed it. And it looks like they start to stress. I could at that point just chop one out and compost it. So I think I've answered your question on that. If you had a 30 gallon tote or a raised bed, the same thing. If you've got enough space and it looks like you do, then go ahead and you can push it a little bit more. But if you push too much, you end up with less. If you have one big plant in there, it's going to produce and produce and produce and go on and on and on. But that's one thing you want to remember. So less in this respect is better than more. Okay. And I think we covered all that today. And the reason I like the soil that I make is the soil that I make is alive. When I put those branches and everything in there, think about it. All the earthworms come to it. They want to feed in there. You have your own worm farm in there. You've got your microbes in there. You've got everything going in there that's for the plant. When you buy bagged soil, would you go to a restaurant that's absolutely gorgeous that has you sit down with the most beautiful dishes and gives you a glass of water? That's what you're doing. The earthworms aren't going to come. There's nothing in there for them to eat. So if you get a bag of soil, when you start having leaves, make a little hole and push it down there so at least you have something to offer your earthworms and your microbes. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. And one more ending note. Some of you have seen some of these big plants that are producing fruit throughout the yard. Those are last year's zucchini that made it because it was up against the wall and being happy in a tote, it made it all through the winter, even during our freezing times. And they're trying to make a comeback. Later on, I'll compost them in when I have a lot of other zucchini plants to plant. But right now, I'm just going to leave them be.